My name is Sunday Okabaitis. I'm CEO of Golden Frog, the company that owns Viper VPN. Please tell the viewers, who are you and what do you do for Viper VPN? Okay, I am uh, CEO of Golden Frog, is the company that owns Viper VPN. Um, we started that company in 2009. I've been with the company from the very beginning. Um, as we moved into rolling out a VPN, I was part of that and growing up to the company over the years. So my I serve the role right now of uh, CEO. Just going back to the history, when was this company, when, when was Golden Frog formed? Golden Frog was formed in 2009. Uh, we rolled out Viper VPN shortly thereafter. Um, and really, you know, Viper VPN was really a political response to what was going on in the United States at the time. Um, we were starting to understand there was a lot of surveillance going on by the U.S. government and realizing we attempted to work through the political process of talking to the people in Congress, talking to the regulatory bodies and testifying saying these were threats to people's privacy and they literally told us, well, no one's really come up here to talk about privacy ever. You're the first company that's talked about privacy on the internet and it was a foreign concept and we started realizing that um, in Washington, D.C., there was very little understanding of what was going on, and we lost faith that through the political process that they would provide solutions to protect the citizens. So we said we need to build a solution to protect um, people's privacy, and that's when we started Viper VPN. Um, at that time, there was there were some VPN companies already, um, but really our vision then was to modernize it and make it easy for people to, to protect themselves. And that's kind of was our genesis, was really kind of a political response to what um, was going on on the internet that we saw was happening before people really were aware, you know, as Snowden came out and other things and other disclosures have come out, but we, we, we felt that early on that, that it was going to be an issue and we need to help protect people. What is really the one best thing about Viper VPN in your opinion? The one best thing about us and Viper VPN is that you can trust the people behind it. We're real people. We talk about the issues. We're a very mission-driven company. Um, all of our employees, including myself, are very uh, aligned to protecting the internet. We feel like we've been talking about these issues for years. There's been a lot of VPN companies founded since then, but I think it, for us, um, the one thing you, you should know about us is you can trust us. We take it very seriously and we're transparent. We're here. Um, so I think uh, consumers should trust us and, and, and we, should, we, do, we work hard to build that trust and we, we're very aware of it. I haven't written this down, but this is something else I've noticed because I, I've gone to your website mm -hmm. and I see your faces. I've been on other VPN websites yeah. and the people are anonymous. What advantages do you get from that? I think uh, being transparent about who you are, why you're providing a product to consumers is how you should do business today. I think all companies should do that. Should say who they are, where they are, what do they stand for, and that way people can feel comfortable, they can trust the company. So for us, it's just core to who we are. We've, we have, from the very beginning, um, been vocal about issues, put our name to it, and we're not, you know, a, a nameless, faceless marketing company that is providing the service. And I think that's what's my concerns about the, the trend I'm seeing in the VPN industry is that where you have folks that have rushed in the industry that don't care about privacy. It's not core to their mission. They're not uh, transparent about what, what the real reasons are. And I think that puts consumers in a tough spot. So we're trying to build that trust by, by being transparent, talking about who we are. I think it's something that's been core from day one. What are the most important points or facts about Viper VPN from your opinion? The more, uh, you know, I think, again, um, we're a mission-driven company. And we have been talking about this. A lot, I think a lot of companies have imitated it, which is nice. But we've been, we were the first to talk about privacy, security, freedom. And that's what a VPN delivers. And I think that for us is talking through that and being very mission driven and focused on that, that influences everything we do, is, is, is one of our best qualities. Yeah, sure, I think our, our applications are modern and compete and are easy to use, right? But I think 
it's really more about what our core principles are that should lead to people trusting us. Um, for many years, we talked about how it's hard to be anonymous on the internet. We were very out front on that. It took a lot of a lot of criticism for that. But I think what you see as a company, we are wanting to put our opinion out there to to educate people and to also build trust um, in what we're doing because we're always focused on our mission of throughout all the companies we have here. We have multiple internet companies, but I think is unique for VPN companies. We have multiple internet businesses, and across all of those, we have core principles of really preserving and keep the internet open so people can communicate that's what it's about you know people talking to people so um, we have that I think is our core mission is is important mm -hmm. um, there is more information than you would ever think that an ISP can see about you and the advertising the intrusion in their life so I think there's um, a lot of concern about corporate surveillance you know I think a VPN helps helps that I think obviously um, I love services like DuckDuckGo I think browsers that are privacy oriented, you know, like Firefox. But if people think that these consumer grade services are gonna defeat targeted surveillance on you by government, I think they're mistaken. You know, if they, you know, if they wanna find you, they will find you. Um, but what we're really trying to defeat is that the, really the mass, the, ma the surveillance that's not targeted on individuals that is, it, that is with outside due process that corporations are playing in gray areas and due to the lack of legislation effectively citizens have to arm up and protect themselves because the governments aren't protecting them. Those are the areas I think that that, that people can really um, use some of these tools but if you're saying surveillance that's targeted on you the individual I think that's these services don't do that and don't have would not set that expectation. Okay ne next question who are your main competitors and why? Gosh there's so many VPNs these days right? Um, it's evolved. In the beginning, there was a set of competitors, and they went they went to the wayside. Um, I would say, kind of the original VPN companies have either been um, bought or consolidated, or sold to much bigger billion dollar companies that that have other uses for them. So that that, that has changed, and so I don't feel like we're facilitating or soliciting that. And that's certainly not a business where we talk about or market to. We really are focused on protecting people and creating openness. I think that's where we're at. Um, and I think that's where, <clears throat> you know, as we talk to people in Congress, we talk to politicians, that's what we talk about is they have that same perception, well, this must be used for, for bad. That privacy, if you want to be private, you must be doing something wrong. And, you know, everyone says that. Well, you know, everyone says, I don't have anything to hide. Well, like, why don't, why don't you look, let me go look through your closet a little bit? You probably wouldn't like someone showing up your house doing that. Why, would, why won't you let me just look through your car? Well, I don't want someone looking through my car. Like, you know, people that say they have nothing to hide, we have a desire for privacy. I think that's what we're, we all need that and should expect that. And that's what we're protecting. And um, I think that that is where, you know, we try to educate <clears throat> politicians and that, that just because you want to be private does not mean you're doing something wrong. Those things are not related. Because those that want to do wrong will find any tool for any means to do it. And it's not our job to prevent that. I'm an American. I think that um, freedom of speech is very important to us as Americans. It's not, it's not uh, unfortunately, every country doesn't have share that belief, right? And so, um, that, that's where it gets in a situation where you do have people, um, again, wanting to put restrictions, identification on that, and does that inhibit freedom of speech? People not feel comfortable to talk. And that's where it gets to me to be a situation where, where do you stand as a company? Do you gonna, are you gonna decide on openness or are you gonna decide on restriction? And I think that we're gonna decide on openness, but as Americans, we definitely, um, core value of ours is freedom of speech. And people can say what they want, words don't hurt you, it's actions, right? And, you know, we're gonna, you know, I think that getting that on the table and talking about more is an important issue. Like, where, where is the line? Other countries have said, particularly in the UK, like they, they, need, to, they need to know where, where people are going and things need to be blocked. And, and I think we're gonna be on the side of fighting against that. Um, 
and that hasn't happened here in the United States, I think there would be a lot of uh, pushback for that. I've seen it happen in other countries. Australia is another country where there's a lot of restrictions being put on the internet and what people can do. And I think it comes down to where, what each country wants to do. Um, if we feel like we're in that jurisdiction and we have to do it, we'll do that. But that hasn't been the case yet. So. Yeah. What is your opinion on the current state of the VPN space? In my opinion, the current state of the VPN space, um, it is, it is I, I think it's been declining in terms of the trust by consumers for the overall space. Um, I talked about in the last two or three years, we've seen the marketers rush in and buy VPN companies that don't really care about privacy and they put a lot of money in the space creating to, there's a lot of false advertising, there's a lot of people saying they do X, like they don't log or how they treat data just to get great confidence and trust, but they actually really don't. And that, that, that erosion of, of trust, in, if one VPN company does it and another does it, it, it affects the whole industry. And so uh, I'm disappointed in the state of the industry right now, to be honest. I think it's, while it's good, I think there's more VPNs than ever. I think that the, my concerns is it will be, it will, the confidence will erode in VPNs and people won't use them. And then in that world, what's left for them? You know, I think we need to do a better job as an industry. Um, we worked together last year to try to establish some principles. I'm still working with some other folks in the VPN industry to help work on that. Um, and we're not done yet, but um, we need to not complain, but lead and say this is what it needs to be so that it can help consumers make good decisions and, and allow companies to um, the good ones to come out and be more vocal about what needs to be done. So I think it's, it's, it's eroded. I, I think confidence in the VPN industry has eroded, unfortunately. Um, and I think we can turn that around because if we don't have VPNs and encryption, what's left? Okay. You know. So, something else has just crossed my mind, if you don't mind me asking this one. What have you learned from your dad? Well, I would say my dad and my mom because they're okay, really co-founders. Yeah, they are. Um, an equal. Um, I've learned that, you know, these businesses were started with ten thousand dollars, and they weren't started with venture capital money or outside money. It was a husband and wife that could work together and, you know, believed in each other and 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 had the right idea and it worked. And so I think we have a lot of kind of no excuses attitude around here, which is really good as a company that. You know, they did it with such little. We have, as we have more abundance, you know, there's no excuse why we can't do more. And and hard work and being committed to each other and and working together, there's a lot you can do. And I think that that's what I've learned from them. I think that spirit is throughout all the companies of, you know, kind of that blue collar approach to it. Where vis a vis, where you see other tech companies is go to outside parties, get a lot of money, and it either fails or it does well and they sell it. And we've built it more from the ground up. Okay. Um, with a lot of people who have been here, we have 20 year plus people, we're proud of that, you know, and so that have come along with us. I've learned that um, if you just have belief in each other and, and a small amount of resources, you can make a lot of happen. And that's how Viper VPN started. We started spinning up a server overnight, like took us, Took our technical guys like three or four days to do the first server, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then they say, "What are we going to do next?" And that's how it was birthed. It was just a small amount of resources, and let's put it in the market. Let's start trying to protect people. And it didn't start with some multi-million-dollar plan. It started with just setting up one server and going from there. And so I think that sort of attitude is what I've learned from them: is is to to be nimble and and. You don't, need a, you don't need a lot to do a lot. You know, I think that that gets lost sometimes. And so we have that spirit around here, which I'm, I'm proud. I think we still have that here. We still have, we're doing well as a company, but we're always thinking, what's next? What are we gonna do next? And so that's the opportunity. But I do, very aware of in family companies, you know, the, um, what is it? Is it, um, the, yeah, the third generation and things can go away. But you know, listen, yeah. how many internet companies are 25 years old? We just cel celebrated our that's 25th, right. I mean, there's, 
it's just, you know, these types of businesses, internet businesses can be very more short lived. And so we're, we're more focused in the next, you know, three to five years than that far down.